In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effect it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless wizard cloaks were lost. Actually, we do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmos the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, and, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly. Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I know that name. Lovecock said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Now, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbald Weft, another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Revelio. Oh, that's okay. here in the bell tower and all students introduce themselves to this. Oh yes, I see you found Grimbold Weft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of the scholarly pursuit. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir Ash Puddle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower, a retinue of loyal knights. Rebellion. Or rather, statues of knights, I should clarify. Keen eyes. These bits of broom are all that's left of a witch. Sir Skaggle thought the heedless once challenged. Fall to a game of musical chairs. Care to guess who won? His fame was not Sir won Ashford by vanquishing foes and singers, nor by slaying. At least we're out of the classroom. Rebellion. And his warm and approachable demeanor. Courage. And to make the waving statue's acquaintance. Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Afpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Afpuddle's affability was his undoing died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. 
Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Pity goblins and wizards can't get along. True. But imagine how dull my lectures would be without goblin rebellions to discuss. Mm. History does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise students, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say that.